Williams back or forward, depending on whether you want one of them on the back or on the forward. It's quite obvious. So. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. You already know who I am because, well maybe you don't actually. My name's Chris, I'm a graphic designer based in Melbourne. Uh, it's what I do, it's what I love. And today I'm gonna teach you guys uh, a little kind of tip or trick or strategy to make this. But not specifically this, not the whole thing at least. I'm just gonna show you guys what's really eye-catching, and that's, no, it's not the vector art, it's, it's the gold metallic kind of looking thing. And it's really not that hard to make, I swear to God. I'm gonna jump into the computer right now, I'm gonna show you guys how I made that, and then I'm gonna show you guys the speed up of the whole process of how I made this. It's just an invitation, but um, yeah, any content's good content. Yeah. Wow, we're in my computer, that was awesome. Um, not really. Anyways, this is the invitation, this is it. Uh, it was a 50th birthday invitation that a family friend commissioned me uh, to make and it was a lot of fun to be honest, I haven't done something like this before. Anyways, getting back to, well, I haven't really started. Getting back to the actual, again, I haven't started. Getting to the artwork. Ha. <laughs> It was really simple. All I've done is really trace the original artwork where, which actually I'll show you guys. This was the original artwork. I've traced with the pen tool, just up here, all the lines in which I thought were significant enough to trace. I'm sure most of you will know how to use the pen tool. I'm not gonna go too into detail, but you grab your pen tool, you go click, click. I'm holding the shift button here, click. And um, as you can see, we've drawn a shape. If I make this a color, We've got a shape. All right, so this here is the gradient that I use. Now, when you're doing metallics, there are always many different ways to create a metallic looking gradient. Um, I found this specific one online and you can literally just type in Google Images, uh, metallic gold gradient, and it, uh, it'll come up with one in which I just drag and drop, and then I, I drop where I think you know the colors change the most. So I would turn something like this into an actual shape that is recognized on Illustrator as a gradient. And then I will go ahead and draw shapes using this gradient. Now I'm just gonna give you a quick example of how you kind of get this, this look. So this is what I do. I draw a shape, I draw a square. We're dealing with lots of squares. Only a few circles, uh, but yeah, majority of squares. As you can see here, I'll put one, maybe one big square, one little square, and why don't we just go with um, another small square which has to be the same size as this square because I have OCD. Um, sweet. All right, so as you can see, the gradients have lined up perfectly because I've just been duplicating the same shape. However, if I uh, click on one individual shape and click the uh, gradient tool, which is our uh, G uh, on, uh, on the keyboard as a shortcut and just drag it uh, the opposite way, so as you can see here, you'll see that the gradient will now go from dark and you'll hit this light part in the middle and continue going down and you kind of get this contrast uh, between light points one looks like it's kind of going backwards and the other two are kind of on top of it sweet so if you just if you guys just play around with that uh, you'll be able to create some pretty cool looking kind of like gradient styles that is essentially as you can see through a lot of this the direction in which uh, i was taking uh, if you see here i've actually cut up the shapes into different shapes so when the uh, in parts intersect it's no longer a gradient anymore you've got one shape in which is a gradient which connects this shape which is also a gradient but you can see here that my gradient in this part is going halfway across the screen so really the only part in which you're seeing is the lightest part. Um, it does take a little bit of playing around with, and so I do encourage you to just jump on, make some shapes, make some gradients, and kind of just uh, play around with that. But do keep in mind, if you're chopping up some shapes and you uh, have a very sharp and sudden change of color, you can create a dynamic change. As you can see, it looks like uh, we've got a few corners going on here. Now, the last thing I want to teach you guys uh, in regards to how I went about this is 
a little bit of shadowing. Now, as you can see down here, uh, there's a shadow. And it looks like these five uh, pillars are on top of these five pillars. Or is this, yep, there's five. Sweet, grade two mass, perfect. And it's really easy, it's really, really easy. I'll go back up here, uh, just to uh, show you guys as, a, as an example. I'm gonna grab this. First things first, you wanna be sending uh, your items back or forward, depending on whether you want one of them on the back or on the forward. It's quite obvious. So just for this example here, I'm gonna send this onto the back. As you can see, they're overlapping. What I would do is copy whatever subject you have on top, and then uh, I'm, gonna go, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna paste that straight on top, uh, which I use Control Shift V. So it pastes the item exactly on top of where you copied it. Great shortcut. I'm then gonna change the color to black, uh, which didn't work. Uh, sometimes that happens. You just click on the normal fill, go on white, change it to black. Um, and then I'm just gonna go over here to effect, blur, Gaussian blur. And uh, you can kind of play around with the uh, density of the blur itself. I kind of like that. Uh, now I'm gonna send this backwards. So control bracket again, as you can see to the back. And now it looks like it's on top. Uh, it's quite simple, quite easy, as you can see there. I, I don't feel really feel like I need that middle part um, as a shadow, so I'll just delete that. Uh, and uh, yeah, you've got the shadows underneath, and that's how you kind of create a little bit of depth. They're basically all the skills that I apply to creating this background. And yes, it looks very complicated, but um, it's not. Apply these skills, have a play around, and you will be able to uh, achieve something similar to this, or even better, who knows? Keep practicing. Anyways, now we're gonna jump into the speed up of how I went about it. So um, for those that don't give a fuck about anything that I just said, this is where you wanna be. Thank you very much for the video, guys. I hope I taught you something. Um, like and subscribe.